Hello everybody, welcome back to another Dazzle video. Today we are going to try and go over a little bit of a timeline benchmark for the first 10 minutes of a support Dazzle game. Dazzle. I am playing position 4 this game. However, this can also apply to position 5 and so um, this is very useful in any of your uh, matchups that you play uh, in the support role. Okay, so first let's go over what the goal is for the lane. Okay, the overall goal for the lane. Number one, you want to help your lane partner. Okay, you want to help your lane partner farm. Now you're going to mostly do this by keeping the lane closer to your tower and then taking advantage of your power spikes, being aggressive based on each matchup. Those nuances are not going to be covered in this video. So we're kind of going to ignore all these right clicks and uh, when I'm casting what spell. This video is going to be more on the bigger picture of what you want to do um, throughout the map instead of what you're going to do in the lane. So the first goal is to help your lane partner farm. The second goal in the laning stage, the first 10 minutes, is to empower your mid by showing up to power runes. Okay, so these six, eight, and 10 minute power runes especially. Of course, there's power runes throughout the game every two minutes, but we're just gonna talk about the laning stage here, the first 10 minutes. So the six, eight, and 10 minute power runes. And you're also gonna be contributing to the small fights um, in order to get your mid ahead. So inevitably, if you're in a lower MMR, you're gonna be the only support that shows up to the power runes, I guarantee it. If you're below four and a half K or maybe even five K, you're probably gonna be the only support that shows up. Um, and so you, that's a great advantage for you to be able to do that. Uh, the second, the third goal I should say that you have is to empower your hard carry by stacking camps. Uh, if you're playing position four, this would be the triangle. So you stack the uh, ancient camp and the uh, big camp in the triangle. Um, the only time you're really thinking about your own game is when you're really doing these trades in the lane with your lane partner. Otherwise, you're thinking about your core. Also, you're thinking about uh, your own game when you take the wisdom room at minute seven, which we'll go over. So. Without further ado, we're gonna talk about our first benchmark, which is right here at two minutes and 30 seconds. Two minutes and 30 seconds is your first benchmark. You want to try and be aggressive starting at two minutes and 30 seconds. And the reason is the Lotus Pool is going to spawn at three minutes and you wanna secure the Lotus Pool. So at two minutes, 30 seconds, you're going to see if you can be as aggressive as possible. Now, in this matchup, we are not as strong as Gyro and Triant. So they're gonna go on us because they are also thinking the same thing. At two minutes, 30 seconds, they wanna secure the Lotus. And so they are going to be aggressive on us. It just depends on the matchup. On this matchup, we just happen to be weaker, so we couldn't secure it. However, if you are stronger, you have a responsibility to push your advantage and take the Lotus Pool. Do not let the enemy get the Lotus Pool. Okay, so you're gonna see in a second, they're gonna ping the Lotus Pool and I'm gonna do my best, but I just cannot contest it with this low of an HP. Uh, at level two, I can't contest both heroes, so. Um, I end up not getting it. However, you want to try and push the lane in general, cast your Poison Touch, cast your Shadow Wave, and try and secure the Lotus Pool. At 5.30, you want to start planning for the 6-minute Power Rune. The 6-minute Power Rune is absolutely crucial for your mid. Mid matchups are massive and defining how the early game mid game will go for your team so as a support dazzle you must show up to the six minute power rune okay and how are you going to do that is 
You first walk through your triangle. Okay, we're going to stack the camps. And then we're going to show up to the power room. And you'll see the big impact that it has. Now, in this particular game, my mid did not buy a bottle. So I just take the room. Okay, but if that rune was a double damage, if that rune was a haste, that opens up a world of possibility for your mid player. And you're going to see the kind of impact that it has on this game in particular, where the opponent was a little bit late, um, and they're reacting to my move on the map. So we end, we end up getting three kills here. I end up escaping. And that right there is a huge swing to the entire game. We are now up 1k. And this is going to start the snowball because now the enemy mid has died. The enemy offlane has died. The enemy support has died. So all our cores, remember, we want to empower our mid and our offlane by being strong in lane and showing it to power rune. So we killed both of their cores while our cores are get able to get ahead it didn't do much for us particularly right all we did was we were able to luckily steal the bounty room that's not going to happen very often but just the fact that we were able to empower our cores is extremely worth it the next benchmark is actually at 6 30 but because we had gone through this skirmish uh, we missed the benchmark because at seven minutes the Wisdom Rune is going to spawn. Okay, so this is our third benchmark. So the first benchmark, 2.30, then 5.30, and 6.30. This is our benchmark, so we're going to run over. We're gonna grab the Wisdom Rune. Okay, now, immediately at 7.30, that's our next benchmark. And you could see me kind of realize it a little bit late. And this is why you wanna have it 30 seconds before in your brain, right? At 7.30, you need to start thinking about heading over for the eight minute power rune. The eight minute power rune is also extremely important for your mid. So again, I'm gonna stack the camps and I'm gonna walk over. Now, it didn't spawn on this side, it's on the other side, so I ping it out and I contribute to a kill on their mid, which is again, extremely important. That is one of our main goals in the laning stage. So inevitably, when you show up to these power runes, not only are you securing the power rune, but both of the mids are generally going to use their ults against each other to secure these power runes. And for you to be there and contribute to this skirmish is going to be a big deal. Dazzle is amazing in two-on-one, two-on-two situations because you have Grave. And uh, Poison Touch is kind of an icing on the cake, but your Grave, One Point Shadow Wave, should secure the kill in a lot of cases. So please make sure you show up to the 8-minute Power Room. Just to note here, in the first 10 minutes of this game, I stacked 8 camps. I secured the Wisdom Rune. I secured all 3 Power Runes. Or I, I didn't take them, but I helped the team take them. I showed up to the fights during these Power Runes secured kills for my mid and my off lane and i was able to steal one of their bounty runes so as a position for dazzle even though i didn't grave anybody even though i didn't really cast that many spells per se i showed up in the right places at the right time and made an impact that way Okay, and this is me being a good support player. I just try and tank Hoodwink's ult um, because I thought uh, Disruptor would die, so I decided to tank it. Um, and now, coming up to finish up our first 10 minutes of the game, we have 930 as our benchmark. And 930 is a benchmark again because the 10 minute power rune is coming up. So again, I'm gonna walk into the triangle and this is why it's important to go 30 seconds ahead. You might be thinking in your head, 30 seconds is way too long of a time. Well, it's because there's always going to be something happening in the game that kind of gets in the way of this benchmark timing. So you want to 
think 30 seconds ahead so you have time to make the decision to come. Okay, so I don't secure this power rune, but I at least narrow it down. And maybe if my Pudge was here, he could have hooked it. Or if my Disruptor had a little more HP, we could have controlled this rune. But the concept stays solid. You always want to show up to the power rune. And that is the first 10 minutes. Let's review. We have 2 minutes and 30 seconds to go for the Lotus Pool. Okay, so that's when you're going to be super aggressive in lane. At 5 minutes 30 seconds, you're going to walk over, stack the camp, grab the rune. This is also a chance for you to see if you can grab a bounty rune. If you're playing on the safe lane, there's a bounty rune here. Um, if your mid does not get the power rune, they can refill their bottle and the bounty rune. At 6 minutes and 30 seconds, you want to think about grabbing the wisdom rune. At 7 minutes 30 seconds, you want to stack and try and grab the 8 minute power rune. And then at 9.30, you want to try and grab the 10 minute power rune. So you can be very impactful as a dazzle in the early game, even if you have minimal items, just by showing up to the right places at the right time. Um, I know it takes a long it takes a while to master because in a lot of games, in a lot of scenarios, you're going to be caught up thinking about the intricacies of each lane. But I think if you give yourself a 30 second buffer to be able to come over and help your mid player get a great start in the game and also stack camps along the way, grab the runes, your life as a Dazzle player is, be is going to become so much easier because your cores are not going to die as easily. So you're going to be able to land your graves more reliably and it's really going to take the attention off of you in team fights so that you don't get focused down and the enemy team has to deal with your cores who are really farmed and that in turn is going to help you farm into the mid game and then in the late game you can have items that really help you scale like get your ags ether lens something like that all right, guys, hope you guys learned something, and uh, good luck in your next games as Dazzle.